Okay, today we're going to be discussing paragraph structure and how to write a summary. All right, let's go over our agenda for this lecture. First, we'll discuss what a paragraph is and then talk about how to write a successful paragraph. Then we'll move on to summaries, uh, discuss what a summary is, and then how to summarize sources effectively. Okay, first we'll discuss paragraphs. Okay, what is a paragraph? A paragraph is the building block of an essay. It's um, a group of sentences and together they form one indented block of continuous text. So when you begin a paragraph, you continue typing or writing at, without hitting return or skipping a line until you get to the end of the paragraph. That's what I mean by continuous. A paragraph has one main idea. That's, we call it unified. All of the sentences within a paragraph should be about that main idea. Within a paragraph, we have sentences that have different functions. The uh, paragraph begins with a topic sentence, which tells the reader what the main idea is. After the topic sentence, you have a series of support sentences that do just what their name implies. They provide support for the topic. When the paragraph is finished, you end with a concluding sentence that sort of sums up what it is that you've talked about and provides a transition to the next paragraph, the next topic. So, how many sentences do we generally have in a paragraph? Well, if you see in the small um, uh, picture example on the right, we have one topic and one concluding sentence that's two, and then they have three support sentences, so that would be five total. This is the absolute bare minimum for a paragraph. In order to have an acceptable paragraph, you must have at least five sentences. Why three to um, support sentences? Well, I mean, three is a number that's very popular in American logical structure, but in general, um, realistically speaking, you're going to have a paragraph that has far more than five at least 10, I would think. Um, but paragraphs can be as long as a page. It just depends on how many support sentences you need to support your topic. But in general, you should have no fewer than five. Uh, one thing to note, when you indent a block of text, when you indent a paragraph, please use the tab button located on the keyboard. Don't try to hit return several times to begin a paragraph. All right, now that we know what a paragraph is, we can talk a little bit more about how to make our paragraphs successful. One thing that you can ask yourself is a series of questions whenever you are writing. The first thing you need to, to discuss is, what is the paragraph for? What is its purpose? Uh, what place does it have in your essay? Is it the introduction? Is it a summary of your source? Is it the place where you're doing analysis of your sources? Are you disputing or critiquing an argument? It depends on what it is that you actually want the paragraph to do. When you know what its purpose is, then you can know whether or not it's performing its job. Then look at the individual sentences in the paragraph itself. Are they all about the same topic? If they're not, if they're about something else, or if they're including information that's extraneous to this topic, then they don't belong here. They need to be in their own paragraph. Do the support sentences actually support the topic? Do they explain it? Do they prove it or disprove what you were trying to disprove? Do they define it? What kind of, of job are they doing? Are they doing what they are supposed to do? And is the paragraph developed? Is there enough support? Is, do you have enough support sentences to adequately provide information about your topic?
Okay, now we're going to move on to uh, summaries um, and specifically summary paragraphs. Okay, what is a summary? A summary expresses the same ideas as a source. What source? Well, that depends. Um, most of the time we're talking about a reading source, so an article, um, a passage from a textbook, um, a lecture or uh, an interview or something of that nature. The source can be anything. It's either some kind of recorded or written material. Most often it's going to be written. Um, your summary is going to detail the most important ideas or information from that source. So you go through the source and figure out, okay, which points in this article are the most important. And in, this is extremely important. A summary is shorter than the original. It's not going to be the exact same length because that would be pointless. You want a summary to be short so that you can get the main ideas from the source without having to read it. In order to summarize a source effectively, there are several things that you need to do. First of all, understand the source itself. You actually have to understand the thing that you're talking about. This seems basic, but you would be surprised at the number of people that are trying to summarize a source when they didn't actually understand what the source was about in the first place. Go to your article and read closely. Understand what the information is. If there are large passages that you do not understand, then look up that vocabulary and figure out what it means. Talk to somebody about it. That might be um, some ways that you can actually understand the source more deeply. Go through the text itself and note the key or important points. It might be a really good idea to read the first sentence, what you hope would be the topic sentence of every paragraph. This might help you to delineate what those important points are. Don't include any other information not in the source. Uh, a summary is not the place to include your opinion or your ideas about the topic, and it's unless you're including all of your sources in the same paragraph, which generally doesn't, uh, doesn't happen, um, you don't need to include information from other sources. Um, remember that these are not your ideas. They're supposed to be somebody else's ideas. That's what a summary is. But you do still need to make the source clear state according to this person in the article from the New York Times here is the title make sure that your reader knows for a fact this is the summary of the article I read um, and paraphrase don't just restate everything in the same words that were used in the original in the next slide we're going to talk about how to paraphrase effectively Okay, here we have two examples of paraphrases. One is a good one and the other is not. The original text we see on the left, this information is taken from the Purdue OWL, which is the uh, Purdue Online Writing Lab, which is an excellent source for all writers, not just non-native speakers. And I highly recommend that you check it out. The original text states, some argue that the approximately 11 million undocumented immigrants in the United States ought to receive a path to U.S. citizenship, while others claim that these immigrants need to be deported back to their home countries. If we look at the inadequate paraphrase, that means the bad one, we can see that the structure of the two sentences is exactly the same. The yellow highlighted portion in the original is in the same location in the paraphrase as is the purple. So there is no change to the sentence structure here. It's basically just stated exactly the same way. In addition, you can see in the yellow part uh, that is underlined, 11 million undocumented immigrants in the United States ought to receive a, those words are repeated verbatim in the inadequate paraphrase. So this is not a good paraphrase. That basically, this is too similar to the original text. It's not a paraphrase. It's basically an unattributed quote. What we need to do to paraphrase well is to change the structure of the sentence. In this particular sentence, we've got uh, two independent clauses that we can basically reverse. So although some individuals maintain 
that undocumented immigrants should go back to their countries. Others defend these immigrants' right for a path to citizen citizenship. Excuse me, that word is hard to say. So you can see that the structure of the sentence has been flipped. So we've shifted the clauses. That's a good way to change the structure of the sentence. In addition, we're using some different words. Um, some argue, some individuals maintain. Those are different. So we're looking for um, uh, synonyms for words that are used. So restating it in different words. So the two ways to paraphrase effectively is to change the structure of the sentence and use different words. Uh, one tip, you can use a thesaurus to find different words if you're looking for a synonym for a word that you think needs to be changed. A thesaurus online is a good source. But make sure that the word has the same connotation. Okay, to sum up, haha, ha, little teacher joke there. Uh, today we talked about the basic structure of a paragraph and how to write a paragraph effectively. And we discussed what a summary was and some techniques for writing a good summary. Uh, for s further resources, you can check out the additional resources on our course website. And I highly recommend that you visit the Purdue OWL for other grammar and writing questions if something comes up that we haven't yet addressed. But uh, feel free to send me an email with requests for topics at any time. Uh, you should be ready to participate. Um, you should have already participated in the online discussion. And now you are ready to read your articles and start your uh, summary and response essay. Good luck.